Welcome back to the Neurology Channel, your go-to destination for all things related to neurological health. In today's video, we're going to discuss a condition known as CIDP, or Chronic Inflammatory Demyelinating Polyneuropathy. CIDP is a rare neurological disorder characterized by progressive weakness and impaired sensory function in the limbs. Identifying its early signs is crucial for early diagnosis and effective management. Before we delve into the top 10 early signs of CIDP, make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell to stay updated on all our latest videos. Number one, gradual weakness. This gradual weakness often starts subtly with individuals noticing a decrease in strength during everyday tasks, such as lifting objects, climbing stairs, or even holding a pen. Initially, the weakness may be mild and sporadic, but over time, it tends to worsen and become more persistent. The weakness typically begins in the extremities, such as the hands and feet, and gradually progresses to involve larger muscle groups in the arms and legs. What's concerning about this gradual weakness is that it often goes unnoticed or is attributed to aging or lack of exercise. Number two, tingling sensation. Patients often report a tingling sensation, also known as paresthesia, in their extremities. Paresthesia refers to abnormal sensations like tingling, pins, and needles, or numbness that individuals may experience in their extremities due to nerve damage. In CIDP, the immune system attacks the myelin sheath, the protective covering of nerves, disrupting the transmission of signals along the nerves. This disruption can lead to abnormal sensations, often starting as a tingling or prickling feeling in the fingers, toes, hands, or feet. The tingling sensation may come and go initially, but as the condition progresses, it can become more persistent and widespread, affecting larger areas of the body. Individuals may notice the tingling sensation more prominently at night or when in certain positions, such as sitting or lying down. It's essential not to dismiss these sensations as temporary discomfort. Persistent tingling or numbness can be a sign of underlying nerve damage. Number three, difficulty walking. As CIDP affects the nerves responsible for motor function, individuals may experience difficulty walking, stumbling, or even paralysis in severe cases. At first, individuals may notice subtle changes, such as feeling unsteady or experiencing difficulty, maintaining balance, especially when walking on uneven surfaces or navigating obstacles. As CIDP progresses, walking may become increasingly difficult, with individuals experiencing more pronounced weakness, stiffness, and fatigue in their legs. Some individuals may develop a characteristic gait pattern, such as a high-stepping gait or a tendency to drag their feet while walking. Difficulty walking should never be ignored, as it can indicate underlying nerve damage that requires medical attention. Number four, loss of reflexes. A noticeable reduction in reflexes, such as the knee-jerk reflex, can be an early indicator of CIDP. Reflexes are automatic, involuntary responses that occur when a specific stimulus activates a sensory nerve, which then sends a signal to the spinal cord, eliciting a response from a motor nerve and resulting in a reflex action. In CIDP, the immune system attacks the myelin sheath, disrupting the transmission of signals along the nerves, including those involved in reflex arcs. As a result, Individuals with CIDP may experience a reduction or absence of certain reflexes, such as the knee-jerk reflex or the ankle reflex. This loss of reflexes is often detected during a neurological examination conducted by a healthcare professional. In the early stages of CIDP, the loss of reflexes may be subtle and confined to specific areas. However, as the condition progresses, it can become more widespread and pronounced. Number five, fatigue. Chronic fatigue is a common symptom of CIDP and may precede other neurological symptoms. Patients often feel tired despite getting adequate rest. While fatigue is often associated with various medical conditions, it can manifest differently in individuals with CIDP due to its neurological origins. Individuals with CIDP often report feeling persistently tired or exhausted, even after getting an adequate amount of sleep. This fatigue may be overwhelming and impact their ability to perform daily activities. The neurological fatigue experienced in CIDP is different from ordinary tiredness. It's not relieved by rest and may worsen with physical or mental exertion. Fatigue can be one of the earliest signs of CIDP, preceding other neurological symptoms. Some individuals may initially attribute their fatigue to stress, aging, or lack of sleep, delaying the diagnosis of CIDP. Number six, pain. Some individuals with CIDP experience neuropathic pain which can vary from mild discomfort to severe shooting pain in the limbs. Let's explore another important early sign of CIDP pain. While CIDP is primarily characterized by weakness and sensory disturbances, 
pain can also be a significant symptom that affects individuals' quality of life. The pain experienced in CIDP can be neuropathic in nature, meaning it originates from dysfunction or damage to the nervous system itself. Individuals with CIDP may experience different types of pain, including sharp, shooting pains, burning sensations, or aching pains in the limbs. The pain may be localized to specific areas or radiate along the affected nerves, causing discomfort and distress. Pain in CIDP can occur spontaneously or be triggered by various factors, such as movement, temperature changes, or pressure on the nerves. Number seven, muscle cramps. Cramping in the muscles, particularly in the calves, is another early sign of CIDP. These cramps may occur spontaneously or during physical activity. While muscle cramps are commonly associated with dehydration or electrolyte imbalances, they can also occur as a result of nerve dysfunction in CIDP. The exact mechanism underlying muscle cramps in CIDP is not fully understood, but it is believed to be related to abnormal nerve signaling and muscle hyperexcitability. Individuals with CIDP may experience muscle cramps, particularly in the calves, thighs, or feet. These cramps may occur spontaneously or be triggered by factors such as physical exertion, dehydration, or prolonged sitting or standing. Muscle cramps in CIDP can vary in intensity and duration, ranging from mild discomfort to severe, prolonged episodes that interfere with daily activities. Some individuals may also experience muscle spasms or twitching in addition to cramps, further contributing to discomfort and mobility issues. Number eight, balance problems. CIDP can affect balance and coordination, leading to frequent falls or difficulty maintaining a steady posture. CIDP damages the myelin sheath, affecting the transmission of signals between the brain and the body. This disruption can interfere with the proprioceptive feedback and vestibular input necessary for maintaining balance. The inner ear plays a crucial role in balance, providing information about the body's position and movement in space. Damage to the nerves involved in transmitting this information can result in imbalance and unsteadiness. Individuals with CIDP may experience difficulties in balance and coordination, leading to unsteady gait, frequent stumbling, or a feeling of being off balance. These balance problems can worsen with activities that require precise movements or changes in position, such as walking on uneven surfaces or turning quickly. Balance problems in CIDP can significantly impact an individual's mobility and increase the risk of falls and injuries, further affecting their independence and quality of life. Number nine, sensitivity to temperature. Changes in temperature sensitivity, such as heightened sensitivity to cold or heat, may occur early in CIDP. The nervous system plays a crucial role in temperature regulation, receiving and processing sensory information related to temperature from the skin and internal organs. Individuals with CIDP may experience alterations in temperature sensitivity, such as heightened sensitivity to cold or heat. They may find themselves feeling uncomfortably cold in environments that others perceive as comfortable, or they may be more prone to overheating. These changes in temperature sensitivity can be unpredictable and may vary from person to person. Some individuals may notice fluctuations in temperature perception throughout the day or in response to specific triggers. It's important to note that sensitivity to temperature changes in CIDP can be more than just a discomfort. Extreme sensitivity to cold or heat can increase the risk of cold-related or heat-related injuries, such as frostbite or heat stroke. Number 10, autonomic dysfunction. In some cases, CIDP can affect the autonomic nervous system, leading to symptoms like dizziness, sweating abnormalities, and bladder dysfunction. The autonomic nervous system regulates essential functions such as heart rate, blood pressure, digestion, and bladder and bowel control. In CIDP, damage to the nerves can disrupt these autonomic functions, leading to a range of symptoms collectively known as autonomic dysfunction. The exact mechanisms underlying autonomic dysfunction in CIDP are not fully understood, but it is believed to result from the immune system's attack on the myelin sheath surrounding autonomic nerves. Individuals with CIDP may experience a variety of symptoms related to autonomic dysfunction, including dizziness or lightheadedness upon standing, fluctuations in blood pressure, abnormalities in heart rate, gastrointestinal disturbances, and urinary incontinence or retention. These symptoms can vary in severity and may fluctuate over time. Some individuals may experience mild autonomic symptoms that are easily overlooked, while others may have more pronounced and disabling symptoms that significantly impact their daily lives. If you or someone you know is experiencing any of these early signs, it's important to seek medical attention promptly. Early diagnosis and treatment can significantly improve outcomes for individuals with CIDP. That's all for today's video. If you found this information helpful, 
give us a thumbs up and share it with others who may benefit. Until next time, stay informed and stay healthy. Thanks for watching.